It's time for Living Your Purpose, a motivational and inspirational podcast with Peter and Joyce Nielsen. Hey everybody, it's Peter and Joyce Nielsen for Living Your Purpose podcast and we just are happy that you're here. We are days away, six days away to be exact from spring and we want to spring into fitness today and talk about one of the most important things you could do. You don't need an expensive membership to a health club. You don't need bulky equipment. All you need to do is possibly get a good pair of walking shoes and walk. Um, I mean, we both like to be outside, right? I love it. I drive outside, especially in the spring and the summer. Everything's so beautiful to watch it coming back to blossom. And we have two pets, so we have to go for walks. (laughs) And... You hibernate a little bit in the winter. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. (laughs) She likes warm weather. Now, (laughs) (laughs) exactly. She'll be outside. You know, I mean, around the clock, just enjoying the outdoors. And we hope that you are wherever you're tuning in, whether it's from the west coast to east coast, up in Canada, uh, anywhere in the world that you're listening, whether it's through uh, Spotify or SoundCloud or iTunes, or you're watching us right now on YouTube. Um, We just appreciate you. We hope that the weather uh, above you is cooperating. We hope that you and your family are in good health. And there's no better time than right now than to start, you know, an exercise program. And that's really what I wanted to talk about today. You know, as we go from one season to another, a lot of times our mind is basically saying, go, 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 go. And our body's like, whoa, time out. So you need to make sure you either visit your cardiologist, get um, a stress test, uh, your blood pressure taken, um, just to make sure, maybe an EKG, just to make sure that your heart is doing what it's supposed to do. We have almost two of everything. We have two eyes, two nostrils, two ears, two hands, two feet. We only have one pump, so it's really important to make sure that we take care of it. We don't abuse it with smoking or drinking. Um, You know, stress is another trigger um, that creates that fight or flight. It then creates homocysteine, which adds inflammation and havoc to the body, Um, carcinogens, disease. So um, one of the best ways to use cardiovascular training as somewhat of a a pressure cooker release, a circuit breaker release is to truly do cardio. And one of the best ways is to walk, you know, and um, we're going to talk about three different aspects of walking. The first thing that I want to do is talk about the shoes that we wear while we're walking. I mean, I know you like stilettos and I know you like <laughs> five inch heels but you don't walk yeah in five inch heels no no <laughs> maybe when i was 20 but not, not no <laughs> and you don't guys you don't walk i come from the streets of brooklyn you know and i come from um a, an area called bensonhurst and it's a lot of a just a lot of a it's the melting pot but a lot of italians gravitated to there and my mom my grandmother was um, was born in Naples, Italy. Everybody wears sandals. Like, you're talking to me, it's like I'm wearing my sandals, I'm walking. You don't walk with socks and sandals on. <laughs> Although I've done that at times. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's definitely not a, it's definitely not a fashion statement, um, at least in other places other than Brooklyn. <laughs> but you want to make sure that you have a good pair of walking shoes. And there's cross trainers that you that are harder to bend. They have more stability. So they're good for uh, strength training. <clears throat> and then you have high tops, which are great for basketball, so you're not rolling your ankles. Then you have your walking and your running shoes that literally, if you took them, you can bend them and make them touch together. They have more of a cushion. Um, That's what you wanna do. You wanna make sure that you're changing your walking or your running shoes, you know, every five to 800 miles, every six months of use. Also another great suggestion 
for people that are starting a walking program, a lot of times they get, it's called shin splints. Many times people that don't know the physics of what I'm talking about um, on an anatomy standpoint, it's not where you're literally getting, you know, um, chips in your, your shin. It's inflammation in that shaft, that, that shin bone that is between your, your knee and your calf on the front part. And when you're pounding down, you're basically going to get inflammation there. So wearing a good pair of cushion socks, usually they have the cushion in the heel. Um, there may be a dollar or two more, but you can get them at Dunham Sports. You can get them at Thick, uh, Dick's. You could just get them truly um, where they have more uh, support. Once you have the only piece of equipment that you really need, which are the shoes that you wear. Yeah. Yeah. So you, important. I used to run track, and I remember I had shin splints before, and it's pretty intense. And, what you, and if you do have them, what you want to do is ice them and massage them. And what you want to do is you want to massage them towards your heart so that you're not bringing inflammation down here. You're basically relieving and you're, you're coming up. A great way to do it is possibly filling up some, you can do plastic or Dixie cups, little cups, fill them up with water and then put them in the freezer. You could put a paper towel over it, but I use it without that because it's going to be massaging and I'll just basically put it on my shin and just come up and massage it like this. And this is what you want to do 20 minutes on, 40 minutes off. And it's a great way to bring the inflammation down. So now that we know some precautions, we know the socks to, to wear, we know the piece of equipment, your shoes, you want to make sure that there's three elements when it comes to a successful cardiovascular walking program, um, being in the physical therapy business and uh, the wellness business with health clubs for 28 consecutive years, one of the most important things is to evaluate where your fitness level is. Great way to do that is once you get the green light from your, from your uh, physician, you should wear a polar heart rate monitor, whether it's a, a you know, a, an, an Apple a smart wellness watch or a polar heart rate monitor. Again, you can get that at Dick's or Dunham's, even Walmart, different places. And this, you're going to put, there's this band that basically goes underneath your shirt. You wet it a little bit so that your body has electrical current. You clip it in the back. You click the watch to it. You hear beep, beep. Now, all of a sudden, you're watching, no pun intended, you're watching on your watch your heart beating, so you know how many heartbeats it's beating per minute and where your training heart rate is, where your resting heart rate is, etc. So what you want to do is you want to establish your training heart rate. So it should be anywhere between, say, 70 and 80 percent. Take 220 minus your age, that's your maximum heart rate, you times that by 70 percent. You get that number, okay? Say that number is one say 135 beats. Then all of a sudden you do the same thing, 220 minus your age, you have that number, you times it by 80%. Now that's the high number. So maybe your training heart rate zone should be anywhere between say 135 and 150, just using that as an example. Um, and if you're in that zone, it doesn't beep. If you set it properly, if it's below, that 70% of your maximum heart rate, it starts beeping. Beep, beep, beep. It's telling you to move quicker. If, if you're... It's like a, your own personal trainer. It is. <laughs> it almost put me out of business. <laughs> if you then go higher than, say, that 80%, if that's what you're setting on, it starts beeping. So it's telling you to slow down a little. Especially if you're on a beta blocker, a calcium channel blocker, um, which is... A blood pressure medicine that tries to subdue your heart rate, you need to really make sure you talk with your heart doctor, your cardiologist, 
and have him or her establish where your training heart rate zone should be. Then tell your trainer, whether it's at a health club, powerhouse, lifetime, at your house, then you know it's for you. The first thing that you need to remember is um, duration. And duration is just like it says, how long am I doing these sessions? So the gold standard for say a walking program is the duration should be 45 to 60 minutes. And you can do that if you're recovering from a back surgery, knees or hips, you can do that like 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, et cetera. Okay, so I have a question and yes. I'm sure yes. um, some people are wondering if you have a higher intensity, do you still have to do the full 60 minutes? Great question. For someone versus just walking a Great question. Pace? Great question. You're in the driver's chair, so you're the CEO of your own body when it comes to determining what you want. Many people just want to do cardio to facilitate lose excess body fat. I think that's a mistake. So intensity, the higher the intensity of movement, the higher that number goes, um, the more calories you're going to be burning. You know, you just, you're hyperventilating, the more heart health and conditioning you're going to get to your muscle, your heart. If you go slow and long, you're not going to be doing that much heart health conditioning, but you will be burning calories. My recommendation is do both. Get a good heart workout because you take care of your heart now, it's going to take care of you as you get older and get it to the point where you can't fluidly talk to your training partner, uh, your daughter as you're walking, you're having a hard time breathing. And whatever it is for that person, say, what about people that have a hard time walking in general? And they're... It's a great question. Another great question. The first thing that a person should do is invest maybe in a personal trainer or do a step test. A step fitness test is just taking a 12 inch box and stepping up and off of it for say three minutes. You do that and you get to a heightened number, say a high number, um, which may be 70, 80, 90% uh, of your, your, um, your maximum heart rate. But you don't know that until you take this test to see how conditioned you are. And how you determine that is once you get to that, whatever that highest number is, know that if you're conditioned, your heart's conditioned, that number is not going to go that high. If you're sucking wind and you haven't done cardio uh, forever, for years, then that number is going gonna, is gonna to elevate very quickly, meaning that your heart is somewhat out of shape. The other determining factor is when you get off of that box after three minutes, you want to know where your recovery is. So that morning, say prior to taking that test, you want to determine where your resting heart rate is. How you do that is once you wake up and then you let your staying laying down, you basically take your pulse, could take it for 15 minutes, times it by four. That's um, you know, in one minute, how much your heart is beating. Um, a good, say, resting heart rate for the average person is between, say, 68 and 75. The more your condition, the more your resting heart rate is lower. So marathon runners or people that run all the time, their resting heart rate may be 48, maybe 52. And it's a beautiful thing because you know that then your heart's working more efficiently. Once you determine that, you do that box test that I just mentioned, three minutes on and you get off, then you need to determine how long is it taking your heart after three minutes of intensity to recover to your resting heart rate. If you're wearing a polar heart rate monitor or a smartwatch, then what happens is you could see it right there. And once you come down to say that 
54 or 74 or 65, wherever your, your resting heart rate is, boom. Now you write that number down. Every single week you should do that test or at least once a month. And you'll notice that your recovery is getting less and less and less. And if you could put this into real time, I a lot of times recommend a person on a walking program that wants to get into jogging, I recommend them doing, say, a three-minute walk and then 30 seconds jog. And then their heart rate's going to go up, and then they start basically... Um, that's what I like to do first. That's what you like to do, yeah. <laughs> And then what happens is it goes up, mm -hmm. and then when, once it gets too high, you, you basically stop, you wait for it to come back down, and in that process, while you're waiting, you're walking. Mm -hmm. But as your heart gets more conditioned, those three minutes of walking and 30 seconds of, say, running, uh, jogging, may go opposite. Your heart may get so conditioned that all of a sudden, you know, you're you're walking for three minutes and then the next thing you know is you're jogging for three or four minutes. And then instead of um, recovering, which you'll be walking while you're recovering, you're recovering not in three minutes, you're recovering in 45 seconds. So then it's gonna be more of a jog and less of a walk, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So again, the duration should be 45 to 60 minutes, uh, the gold standard. You can separate that from five minutes in the morning, 10 minutes after lunch, 10 minutes after dinner. And for all you pet owners, they will love you. Yeah, you yeah. do your walking. You're and you so it. right. You're so right. You know, um, as long you know, you teach your dog, a lot of dogs, they just love to walk. And once you get into that, that routine, um, it's beautiful. And, you know, many people I see walking in the rain, the snow, whatever the case may be. And then you have treadmills that are probably one of the best cardio pieces of equipment because it could incline, <coughs> decline. It's got a shock absorption board on it. Um, it's calculating your heart rate, different programs. Rain, sleet, snow, whatever. Right. No There's no excuses. <laughs> and now they have treadmills. You could go 15 miles an hour. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. So we know duration is important. Frequency is just as important. How many sessions are you going to be doing out of seven days? And the gold standard, according to the American Heart Association, is five. Five consecutive days. So not like with working out with weights Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. You're, you're repairing on a cellular level. Your heart beats 24-7, 365, thank God. Um, so you want to do it Monday through Friday or Tuesday through Saturday, five consecutive days, five out of seven days a week. So what do you recommend as far as um, doing either your cardio before or after your workout? Or do you split it? Not only is she beautiful, but I, I married her because she's so smart. <laughs> I have <laughs> my I, moments. And I love her soul. Oh, my God. Like, um, great. You know, and I probably would have gone through this episode not even mentioning it, but it's so important. So many people, we live in the richest country in the world. We're nutritionally illiterate. illiterate. We, we shoot ourselves in the foot at the breakfast, lunch, and dinner table. And that's why... I, Three quarters of this country are labeled obese, where we're a little or a lot overweight. Some people are morbidly obese, which is 100 pounds over their ideal body weight. To answer your question is that if you're looking to facilitate, lose excess body fat, then you want to do your cardio after your weight training. When we eat anything, protein, carbohydrates, it basically then is broken down. Um, it goes into... Your pancreas releases insulin and fat. It basically is then broken down into glucose, blood sugar. That then is transported into your muscle bellies called glycogen storage. you got 90 minutes worth of work, and you want to utilize that for muscle. So once you utilize that as a, for, as a, um, a source of energy, what's the next source that you have plenty of, most of us? And that's F-A-T. 
effect. So then what's going to happen is after you basically utilize that and then say you do cardio and you're 10 minutes in cardio and it's got no more carbohydrates or no more glycogen storage to use as, as muscle energy, it's going to then look for whatever's accessible. You want to make sure you always have a positive protein nitrogen balance. So you want to make sure you're eating enough protein with your macronutrients because if you're not, then you're going to feed, if you, and if you don't have enough fat, you're going to feed on your pectoral muscle, your bicep, your forearm, your thigh. Muscle burns twice as many calories as fat. And what's going to happen is it's going to slow down your basal metabolic rate, the amount of calories that we burn in a 24-hour period of time. So just to recap, if you want to lose excess body fat, do your cardio after your weight training. And if you don't, then you do it first? Right. If you if you want to do it first, you can do it first. Mm -hmm. But I feel, at least in my world and what I've been doing for the last 40 years, is that you're going to not maximize your resistance training workout because you're not going to have muscle energy, the blood sugar, glucose, which is in the muscle bellies, glycogen. You're going to be on empty. So you're basically, you may get lightheaded, you may get nauseous because your body's trying to find fuel. And then if you haven't had an adequate amount of protein, um, then it's going to start feeding into that if you have like you low body fat. So it's so important. Again, you're in the driver's chair. You're the CEO of your own body. You could control the beautiful thing. People don't realize you can control what source of energy and calories you want to burn when. So when I'm working out, I want to burn glycogen storage while I'm basically working out so that I get a good pump and I'm strong and I, f I feel good and I'm able to push that weight around. After that, I want to use fat so that I'm going to trim down. If I do too much cardio as in my bodybuilding career, Cardio to me not only is for cardio fitness, for heart fitness, but I used it more as like a clutch on my motorcycle where it's like if, if I did too much cardio, I'm basically going to be not only getting cut, then I'm going to get shredded. My body fat's going to get low. If it gets too low, I'm going to feed into muscle and I'm going to get flat and smaller. So then I need to ease up on that um, gas and that clutch and I need to basically more coast with resistance training. And that's when you get to know your body. It's a beautiful thing. I call it your sweet spot. When you know and you're looking in the mirror and you're seeing lines that you haven't seen or veins or whatever, you know what's working and what's not working. And the beautiful marriage that's made in heaven is nutrition and fitness. You know, they come together and they're just so much synergy there you have good veins sorry i got distracted <laughs> <laughs> i do have good veins i try to um but again it has to do with low body fat so we know duration is very very important and we know that we should you know be working out 45 to 60 minutes each session we know that frequency we should be doing this five consecutive days out of seven and then the last important word is intensity um I could be an intense person. Right? <laughs> I'm sorry. <For> you? <laughs> but intensity is important because, like I was mentioning before, if you're just walking with your friend and you can talk and you're not perspire, you're not you're not sweating, um, your heart's not racing, you know, you may be burning a few calories absolutely because of the activity you're doing, but you're doing diddly squat for your heart. You need to just up the antes just a little. And if you want to get a great cardiovascular fitness workout, strengthening the most important muscle of your heart, and if you want to then use that as a furnace, as a calorie, you know, busting activity, then you want to make sure your intensity is say 70 to 80 percent of your maximum heart rate and i explained it before it's taken 220 minus your age 
that would be your maximum heart rate. Then you times that by say 70% and you get that equation. That's how many beats per minute your heart should be on the low side. Then you could do the same uh, equation with 80% and those are the numbers on the high side. Now you have your training heart rate zone. And I'm sure that some of you are just glazing over because I just gave a whole lot of information. <laughs> I've been doing this my whole you can entire rewind life. And take notes. Exactly. You can watch <laughs> this again and you could also watch our TV show every Tuesday and Thursday. Peter's Principles was launched um, uh, January 2nd. It's golly, I'm aging myself, but I've been doing it for 34 years with the pandemic. It was off for a few years but um, it's in every town near you. It's in New York City, Chicago, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, uh, San Antonio, Houston, Dallas, L.A., um, you know, just Northern California as well. And just speckled throughout the whole country, Tuesday and Thursday, 2 o'clock Eastern Time on Astound TV Network. You can find it in your guide. And um, on Saturdays, we're worldwide on uh, DBTV. And Sundays. Yes, yeah, Saturdays and Sundays. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time on uh, DBTV on Roku. And all you do is... And you Apple go, TV. Yeah, Apple TV yeah. too. So all you do is you go to Roku on your TV, on your phone device, whatever. And you just basically, you know, even tell Siri or, or, or on your remote control at home, just say uh, DBTV, you'll see it, you press it so that it's in your apps there, you press on it there and you'll see the shows and it goes live on uh, Saturday and Sunday at 8.30 uh, a.m. Almost knocked the whole table down, I was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're watching this right now, if you like the content, just press the subscribe button underneath this and if you're listening, you could hear it on any app that you listen to uh, podcasts on iTunes, Spotify, um, SoundCloud, and also on our social media platforms. Yeah. And if people want to email us for, for a question or be a, a guest, how can they find us? Uh, Peter at PeterNielsen.com. Or you can inbox on social media, Instagram, Facebook, all yeah. that good stuff. Yeah. We just want to love on you. And, and we just appreciate uh, each and every one of you joining us every week. Uh, we've been getting some really nice uh, positive responses. We love your ideas. Keep having them come by uh, because knowledge is power. And what we really want to do is use this platform to provoke your spirit, to move forward, to get unstuck, to help you find your purpose. Because as I always say, we were, we were born on purpose to live a purpose-filled life. So God bless each and every one of you. We're actually going to go walking after this. Mm -hmm. And I have the best training partner, the best wife, the best life partner. <laughs> I love this woman. Everyone have a great one. God bless each and every one of you. Hi, I'm Peter Nielsen. I'm excited because I'm going to be with you every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on Astound TV Network. We'll be dealing with nutrition because you are what you eat. Physical activities, whether it's indoors or outdoors, as well as wonderful things you could do with your entire family. Let's get better together, mind, body, and spirit. Tune in to Peter's Principles every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on Astound TV Network.